Hi, welcome back everybody. So today we've got the, we're going to start our, our journey on the 390 stroker build. So I want to talk to you a little bit about this block before we get started. The, um, the customer's original block was cracked. We magnafluxed it. You probably saw that in an earlier episode. So we, we picked up this uh, 390 block that was, um, we got it for my gentleman up north. I, I checked the block out and magnafluxed it and it, it turned out to be a good block. It actually had, he had already had a machine shop bore it and so I checked the cylinders with a bore gauge and everything turned out really nice. They did a really nice job on this block. So this is a really good builder. It's a good candidate. It doesn't look like it has a lot of core shift or anything like that. But before we get started, um, I, I looked on YouTube for 390 FE builds just because I wanted to see what was out there, and man, there's, I mean, there's some, there's, there's some stuff on there that's pretty good, but mainly what you're gonna find is that basically it's just a bunch of slideshows with music playing, right? And then subtitles across, hey, you know, we did this, we did that. So I want to actually make an FE series build that's thorough and complete and kind of give you guys some insight. Um, I've done quite a few of these motors. In fact, when I first started in the machine shop business, one of the first engines that I did, the, the guy that trained me, the journeyman machinist that kind of took me under his wing and trained me, was an FE nut. I mean, he was like a Ford FE all the way. One of the first engines I ever worked on was, was an FE Ford. And the first set of heads that I ever rebuilt um, which included a lot of, you know, extensive work, uh, milling and seat work and guide work was actually a set of FE 428 heads. So, um, I go back a long way with this engine, kind of back to my roots here. So, so first of all, when you're checking out a block, if you want to know whether your block is good, there's some pretty important checks that you need to make on the block. Number one, you need to have the machine shop magnaflux it. That's number one. That, that was... One of the first things we did on the original block was magnaflux it and lo and behold it was cracked. So once we got this we went ahead and magnafluxed it and that's not really something that most the average person can do. You kind of ha unless you have a magnafluxer which you know the average magnaflux uh, setup is probably about seven or eight hundred bucks. It's really not feasible to buy that just to magnaflux one block when a machine shop will, will magnaflux the block for like thirty bucks. So. But we did, we did it ourselves because we have a magnafluxer and we, we magnaflux the block thoroughly, no cracks at all. Another thing that you want to check is the alignment on the main board. And I'll show you how we do that. So in order to do this, you have to have a, a precision machine straight edge. This is not just a random piece of steel. This is a precision machine straight edge. And you can buy these from a lot of different companies. Um, this one we got from ATEC and it was made by a company called Procomp. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our straight edge and we're gonna lay it in the main bore, just like this. We wanna lay it in the main bore. Now normally your block is uh, sitting flush, you don't have to hold this, but for the purposes of demonstration, I wanna make sure I get this, I wanna tilt this block over so you can see it. Then you take your feeler gauges and you take your smallest feeler gauge, in this case, it's going to be one thousandths. Okay, we're going to take a one thousandths feeler blade. You set your straight edge in there, and what you want to do is you put your feeler blade underneath the straight edge, and you make sure that that feeler blade is not sliding under any one of these. So we, if it's sliding under one of these, you got a problem. That means that your main bores are misaligned. So on this one here, we've already checked this, and we have a really good main bore. We have no misalignment issues. Now I can pull that out of there. That's not what I'm looking for. What you're looking for is you want to just let the weight of the straight edge kind of sit on top of that, let it sit across there, and you want to make sure that that doesn't slide easy under there. I can't slide that. So, and you want to do this to every one of them. Make sure it's not sliding because what happens if if you have misalignment here, the straight edge is going to pick it up. And if you have any kind of 
movement, this thing slides out of there, that means that the main bores are distorted in relationship to one another. In order for that crank to rotate smoothly and not bind, the bores have to be perfectly aligned. When they bore this block down here, they, they do what they call a line boring. They fit the caps onto it and then they take a long boring bar and they bore these out and they make these main bores in a perfect alignment with each other. So you want to make sure that you check that alignment. If, if you have misalignment down here, it's going to play havoc with your new bearings when you go to build your engine. So it's imperative what you want to do if you have a misalignment problem is you want to send this thing out to a machine shop and they can they can either align bore or align hone this. They can freshen this up. What they what we do is we actually take and we shave the cap. We have a machine called a cap grinder and we will shave material off of the main cap here which in turn when we bolt it back on it makes that bore a little bit smaller, slightly smaller. We're not talking about much, only a couple of thousands. And then they just hone that or bore that back out to its original factory size and that gets rid of any misalignment or out around or taper. Um, the next thing is in addition to making sure the alignment go is good, which it is on this block, we also need to make sure that these bores are perfectly round. And I'll show you how we do that. So the bore size, uh, what we've done is I've taken and I've torqued the cap on and we have a dial bore gauge here. The the bore size on the FE motor, according to the spec book, says 2.9417 to 2.9425. So you have about an eight ten thousandths window there. So we want to make sure that the size is correct so our clearances are right. And also what we want to do is we want to make sure that this bore is perfectly round. Now we check the alignment with the straight edge and we make sure that they're all in a line. But what can happen, because as an engine runs, we have a lot of stress and pressure pushing down on these caps. And the bolts on the caps can actually stretch. So what we want to do is we want to put a bore gauge in here and make sure that this is perfectly round. So what I've done is I've, I've set the bore gauge on zero here. I use the micrometer to calibrate it. And I set it for uh, 2.9425 which is our, our, our high side here. We don't want it to be any bigger than that. And we're going to put this bore gauge in there and see what we got. So if we center this up, you can see we're really close to being on zero right there. We also want to rotate this thing. And we want to make sure that we don't have any round out of round here. So it's lining right up with the zero. It's just a, just a hair larger than zero, which is maybe two ten thousandths, not a big issue. But what I'm noticing here is the bores are the correct size. And we have consistency all the way around. No matter where we check this, we're right on zero right there. So you really want to check this in three places. You want to go straight up and down and you want to be careful not to interfere with the oil hole there. But you really want to go straight up and down here and make sure you're lining up on zero. And this one is. And then you want to go diagonally in this direction. Make sure you can get your zero here. And we're right on the money there. And then you want to go diagonally this way and line it up and make sure you get your zero there. I've checked this all the way around. Also you want to check taper to make sure that you have the same bore size in the back here of the bore. It's not likely that these would taper but they could. But we want the same size in the back of the bearing as we do up here in the front. And we're getting a very consistent reading there from front to back. So that bore is round within a couple of ten thousandths. Keep in mind you guys a human hair is about four ten thousandths thick on this bore, about half the thickness of a human hair. On a bore that size, that is not going to make a dang bit of difference. It's well within specs. So we're going to go through, I'm going to check every one of these, and I've actually already checked them. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have perfectly good alignment, you have your bore perfectly round and untapered, and this block is in pristine condition. It's all well within specifications. 
And so we got a really good candidate, but these are all things, a lot of times a machine shop can check this stuff for you, but if you want to get the tools and check it yourself, you can, but these are the things that you need to look for. You need to ask the machine shop to make sure that the bores are round and in alignment. And uh, once they check that, if they, if they are out, they can correct that problem. They can align bore this or align hone it and they can fix all that. But that's something that you want to determine before you ever start working on your block. You don't want to figure out that you got misaligned bores or something like that when you're trying to lay your crank in the motor or something and it won't turn. That, that's, you're, you're going about that all wrong. Um, and, and so this is all the checks that you have to do before any of that. Another thing we want to check is the bore size. We want to make sure that the bore has a consistent size here. Now this block has already been bored and of course we've already checked these, but I want to just kind of show you how to do that real quick. We're going to get our bore in a position here where we can work on it and I'll show you what we do. All right guys, so I've got one of the pistons here that we're using. We're using a uh, a Molle forged piston for this build. It's a dished piston. Um, these are really good uh, quality pistons that we've chosen for this build and it is a stroker piston because we're building and putting a stroker crank in. We went with a dished piston because we wanted to keep the compression ratio down to the point where uh, it was streetable, probably about nine and a half to one with the heads that we're using and so we did go with a dished piston here. Now what we want to do to, to check our clearances and you can see that this this block these are the correct pistons for the bore size that we have but we need to verify that what you want to do is you want to mic your pistons now piston manufacturers will tell you where to mic the piston right uh, you always want to mic it on the skirt that's clearance to the bore here which is opposite the the, the pin the gudgeon pin or the or the the wrist pin Molle says you want to mic this um, a certain distance down from the top. I measured it and their their measurement puts me right about in the middle of that skirt. So we're gonna go to the middle of the skirt and we're gonna measure this thing and we just want to get a measurement on our piston here because we want to check our bore size and our clearance and make sure that everything is good. I already know that this stuff is good because I verified it but I really just want to show you how you do this. So we're gonna take a a micrometer reading here on the piston we're going to lock our mic in place. Now we have a reading that we can use to set our bore gauge up. 4.0735. 4.0735. And actually, because of what our bore size is here, that makes a lot of sense. But we want to check the clearance and make sure that we're good. All right, so we've duplicated our piston size here. Now we're going to take and we're going to put our bore gauge in here. And what I've done, if you can see that, I have zeroed out that bore gauge. Let's get this right in the center here. I have zeroed out that bore gauge based on my piston size here. Now when I put this in the bore I should see the difference between the diameter of that piston and this. So what I'm showing here is I have about five thousandths clearance. And that's consistent all the way down. Four and a half to five thousandths clearance which is really close to where we want to be. So, according to Mall A, these forged pistons, we need to have about four and a half to five thousandths clearance, which is really exactly where we are. So this this thing is really good, really good. Yep, right on five thousandths there. Another thing we want to do, and again, I've already done this for all the bores, but when you get a bore job back, you want to verify that your bore is the right size. Okay, so. We don't want to see any variation from the, the top of the bore to the bottom of the bore, and we don't. We really got, I've checked these. We also want to make sure that you don't have any out of round. So we're going to go and we're going to check the roundness of the bore. We want to make sure that we have the same reading all the way around. And of course, we've thoroughly checked these out, and these bores are really good in size. So um, 
the, the bore size, when they bore the block, is going to be right on the oversize. What the piston manufacturers do is they build the clearance into the piston. So the, the piston clearance here, they manufacture the piston, whatever the clearance is, that much smaller, in this case 5,000 smaller than the bore. Traditionally, forged pistons required a lot of clearance. You had to have like 10, 12 thousandths clearance. But these new Molle pistons, the pistons, uh, uh, the piston manufacturing processes and the materials, they, you can run these much tighter now and it kind of eliminates piston slap. So we've actually gone through and checked all these bores and our clearance is exactly where it needs to be. These are things that can't be overlooked, you guys. You've got to check this stuff. So um, you want to make sure that your main bore clearances, because everything's referenced off the main bore, and then your cylinder bores. This block is in very excellent condition. There's some more checks that we need to do. But before we do that, um, we're going to have to pre-assemble this thing and do some other, other checks as well. I want to talk to you next about the oiling system on the block. One of the issues that you'll find with the FE motors is that the oiling systems from the, the factory, eh, they were kind of restrictive. They weren't really conducive to high RPM. Now one thing about this engine is this is a, a truck engine that we're doing for Michael and it's not really going to see a lot of really high RPMs. However, um, there's a couple of areas of the block that are, that are of, I mean, genuine concern even for a street motor. Uh, they, they had certain issues. This is a 7 16th inch drill bit. Now there's an oil passageway that goes up through here. It goes from the pump, if you look at the top here, the pump mounts here. This is my oil pump mounting bracket. And then there's a hole here. This hole is tiny. I mean, it's just, I don't know what Ford was thinking, but it's basically an as cast hole and they really didn't modify it much. The, the hole on the pump is much larger and there's a big mismatch here. And also there's not really, I mean, the, the hole going down here is really pretty small and restrictive. So what you wanna do on this, the, the other oil hole going across is pretty big. I mean, they got, they got this out to 7 16 but they got this little tiny hole here. Um, what you wanna do here is you want to modify this. You want to take a 7 16 drill bit and we want to run that hole up here. Now up at the top, you can't run all the way through with it because up at the top here, what this oil passage does is it runs up here and then it makes basically a 90 degree turn. This 90 degree turn here is also really restrictive. If you look at the oil pump that goes on this motor, I mean, I've got the old pump here. I put a new pump on this, but this is basically the old pump. If you look at the oil passage, on the old pump, I mean, it's just, it's huge. And so what you have is you have this pump blasting all this oil up against this little tiny hole here, and it's a big restriction. So what, what we do on this is you wanna take a 5 8 drill bit, or you can use a Dremel, but I like to take a 5 8 drill bit, and I just wanna kinda of open that up. Now you can't really open it up too, too much, you can't go, you know, obviously all the way through because there's a 90 degree turn here. So we're gonna open up the top side of this hole, right? And then you have to take a, a very fine Dremel and you have to kind of port that. You gotta kinda of get that corner there so that you know there's a smooth transition. And then of course, coming up to that 90 degree turn, you're gonna drill up here with your 7 16 drill bit. And what that does, this is a really common mod for the FE. I mean, we, the, the, every FE I've ever done, I've done this to it. And it seems to really help uh, the lubrication system a lot. There's actually a lot of other oil mods that you can do to this block. Um, the main oil galley drilled through the center. A lot of guys will drill that out in 7 16 so at least three quarters of the way with a long drill bit. But that is for I mean, you're really getting into extreme high RPM builds and stuff there. This engine is not going to see that kind of RPM. Uh, the camshaft that's going in it is, is you know, it's, it's pretty mild. It is a hydraulic roller, but it's, it's designed, we're, we're basically building a truck engine here that we want to get a lot of torque and performance out of. So we don't really need to get crazy with all of that. 
uh, because the RPMs are not going to be in such a place. But this one mod here, is, you, you just really don't want to let this go. You need to do it. Um, I'll go ahead and drill this and kind of fix this, and I'll show you how that works. The other thing is, on the FE, one thing that you will notice, and I don't know why Ford did this, but we got our, we got our new bearings here, and there's a really big mismatch with the oil gallery hole that meets the main bearing. Um, and you know, we need to do something about that too. We're definitely gonna fix that. Also, the, the oil hole, if you'll notice, the oil hole on the number one main, you'll notice is a lot smaller than the rest of them. We also wanna drill that out, but you don't wanna drill all the way through to the uh, to the cam bearing, we drill almost all the way through and we leave probably about that much of a space there because we don't want to get into that cam bearing bore. Now what you'll notice is I'm going to put this bearing in. This is our one of our main bearings that goes into the bottom and you're going to notice something here that's just ridiculous and I don't know why Ford did it. I don't think they really care. They, they figured it was adequate, but I want you to take a look at this. Okay, so I've repositioned the camera so that you can s see that, and um, I'll actually kind of zoom in on that so you can see it. That is really what you have here with, with your main bearings. For some reason, they're like this. Now, we need to kind of correct that because you got a big mismatch there. So what we do, and you can even see where the imprint of the old bearing was. You can kind of see on this one where that hole was right there. So it's a big mismatch. So that's another thing we're going to do. In addition to opening up the oil, oil flow from the pump, we want to take and come in here with a Dremel tool, and we want to relieve that. Hey, guys. So let me walk you through a couple of the mods that we did here, a couple of the, the, the updates, upgrades on this block. So we'll start right here in the front. One of the things that you'll notice is there's an oil drain back hole here, but the hole is quite a bit smaller than this. Um, you know, from the factory, they just kind of punch it out and leave it there. And then also there's, there's you'll notice we added another hole over here. What, what this is, is we are, we, you want the oil, if possible, So we drilled a hole right here into the, into the timing cover area because there's nothing there. There's no water jacket or anything here. This was just solid. So we drilled a hole and then we took a Dremel and we opened that hole up because we want the oil that's in the lifter valley here. We want it to drain out. We don't really want a thick um, puddle of oil in here. There's not a lot you can do on this side because there's really no place to drill a hole to drain it. They do have drain holes here, but what you want to try to do is you want to try to get the oil to drain in the front and the back of the block. And if you'll notice in the back, we opened up these oil drains back here too and tried to lower the level so that the, the, the oil would drain better. Because what happens is if the oil builds up in here, and you're going to get some build up, there's not a lot you can do about it, but if the oil builds up in the lifter valley, it causes what we call windage. Now windage, what that is, is it's oil draining back down onto the cam and the crank, and the cam is rotating in there and it starts whipping that oil. Imagine yourself trying to run through a swimming pool full of water, say you're waist deep in a swimming pool full of water there's some restriction there. You can't really run full speed. Well, the goal with this lifter valley oiling is we don't really want a large volume of oil draining down onto the, to the camshaft because what that does is it, it, it restricts the movement of the crankshaft. It actually takes more horsepower. Windage robs horsepower from the engine. It also aerates the oil and all of that oil that drains down on the cam well, the crankshaft is right underneath the cam, so it's going to drain right back down on the, 
on the crank and the crank's going to start whipping that oil and now we have a large volume of oil that is resisting or restricting the movement of the cam and the crank and it actually robs a little bit of horsepower from the engine so it's not a significant difference but it's one thing that that is a good idea to do we we took and we opened this up here and we kind of took a Dremel in here and we went down to the level of the oil here so that the oil could drain out and it doesn't build up in here and it's going to help a lot and also the oil drains out here and helps to lubricate the timing chain area here and keeps the timing chain cool and so forth so and we also opened this hole up and lowered it so that the oil could drain down here uh, easier so that's that's one mod that you can do and it is helpful it does make a difference um, and keep a larger volume of oil out of here the other thing we did was I talked to you earlier about the oil gap so we've got this we rotate this bohem up around here we've got this oil hole here that was a big restriction and so what we did is we took our you remember how small that was we took our 7 16 drill bit and we went ahead and drilled that out we went ahead and opened up that hole now again there's a 90 degree turn up here so we can only go so far we equalize the size of, of this hole with the the other gallery here if you look at this other gallery here we didn't drill this one the factory already had this one at 7 16 so 7 16 goes right into it so we opened up the passageway from the pump and made it the same size this is really beneficial when it comes to oiling down here because this is always known to be a big restriction now on the bottom side what we did where the pump mounts to this thing is we took and we opened that up to 5 8 now we've got a hole here now where this 90 degree turn is we went ahead and took a Dremel in there and we kind of smoothed that out and ported that thing and opened it up and now we have a much larger hole here that actually matches we don't have this big mismatch with our pump you saw earlier how big the the outlet on the pump is it's huge so we made the hole here very similar to in size to our pump outlet so that we don't really have a restriction here and then we opened up the flow this is really going to help the flow of this engine this is a very common mod for the FE engine and I highly recommend that you do it so we got that taken care of another thing we did here is we drilled out the front oil gallery hole and we made it the same size as the rest of them for some reason Ford made this hole smaller I'm not sure why but we opened it up about 60,000 so we made it the same size as the other oil gallery gallery holes and that helped that now you don't drill we didn't drill all the way through we went down about three quarters of the way about to right there we didn't drill through into the cam because we didn't want to interfere with the cam bore but we did open that up on the bottom side another thing we did was the bearings have a big mismatch and you'll notice that when you see it so the bearings have a big mismatch down on the bottom so what we did is we took and we opened those up and we made that match the bearing if you look at our bearing now you'll notice that the hole that that we modified here is very close to matching the hole in the bearing if we put our bearing in there you can see that now we've gotten that oil gallery hole to really match the hole in the bearing and that that's that's a really a really good upgrade it's something that really just helps the thing oil better and you see that they've all been kind of modified there the the center hole matches up pretty good we made it slightly larger but we had to offset these and then the back one we just enlarged it slightly because it's pretty centered to the bearing so those are some oil mods that I would recommend doing um, took a while to do it you know you with the with the Dremel uh, you just got to take your time and drill that stuff out and took a, a very fine sand cone and we polished these and made sure that they were all deburred and so forth okay so now that we got that down to the block is obviously dirty we're gonna need to to final wash this obviously but before we do that there is a possibility 
that we might have to deck this block. <laughs> and the way that we determine that is we have to check our deck height. Well, the best way to check deck height is to install the crankshaft and then put one piston and rod assembly in each corner of the block and measure our deck height. Because sometimes from the factory, these blocks, and I'm, I'm not sure if this block has been decked or not, I don't know, but sometimes from the factory, the decks can be off slightly one way or the other because what, what we need is we need the deck perfectly square to the center line of the crankshaft. So if we put the crankshaft in and then we put a piston in each corner and we check our deck height, that's going to tell us if this deck is square to the center line of the crank or not. If it's not square to the center line of the crank, we're going to have to set it up and deck it. We're going to have to, we have a special fixture that goes on here and it's, it aligns the cam and the crank with a, with a bar and a set of cones and some fixtures on the front and the back and it will perfectly square deck this block. So I'm kind of hoping that we don't have to do that because it's a lot of extra work, but the fact of the matter is, is if the decks are not square, which sometimes in the factory they're not, we don't have a choice. We're gonna to have to deck the block. Now I did put a straight edge on the deck of this block and it is perfectly flat. So we've really got a nice deck here as far as warpage, uh, no warpage and no twist, but now we need to verify that that's right. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. We're not going to final wash it, but I do need to clean it up because I've got some some grit on here from the uh, from the, the oil modification process. And one thing we don't want to do is when we put our bearings in here, even even just to pre-assemble it for the first time, it's not our final assembly. We don't really want any grit or anything like that uh, getting in the bearings of the crankshaft. So. We're going to clean this thing up and lay the crank and then we'll start taking our deck measurements and uh, that'll be our next endeavor here. When you lay the crank in this time you don't have to put all the bearings in but you do want to put the front and the back bearing in and also in the, on the Ford the center bearing is the thrust bearing. You also want to put that in. This is our crankshaft that we got back from the balance shop. It's a it's a really nice unit. Um, you can see what's interesting here is they actually pressed heavy metal in right here. This is Mallory metal. They drilled it and they pressed a piece of heavy metal in here because when they balanced it, the crank was too light. Also, you want to put a drop of oil on each bearing. You really don't want to want to put um, a crankshaft on totally dry bearings. It's just not a good practice. So. Then you want to take and just lay your crank in there very carefully. Look at your mains and set it straight down on the mains right there and the, the bearings in the front, the back, and the center will support it. This is also a really good time to check and I know this is a brand new crank out of the box but it's also a really good time to make sure that your crank doesn't have any run out. So let me show you how we do that. This is a dial indicator on a magnetic base and we locate the indicator so that it is on that center crankshaft journal. So we're just going to carefully rotate this around, make sure that the crank is not hitting the indicator. We're going to rotate this around and make sure that we don't have any run out or any movement on that. Okay. So we don't have any movement there. This crank is, is running very true. Now we're getting to the point where the throw here is going to hit the indicator, but the reality is, is you actually only have to go halfway around to pick up any out of round. It's going to pick it up if it's there. So we're going to have to stop there because our throw here is going to hit our indicator. But we've gone more than halfway around and we have absolutely no movement whatsoever as far as the crank being bent. So we have no run out and that is a good crankshaft. We knew that was probably the case since it's a brand new stroker crank, but this just verifies that the crank is running true in there. So that's one good thing you can do to make sure that the crank is, doesn't have any issues. Now that we got the crank in the engine, rotate it and make sure that there's no uh, there's no clearance issues here. There shouldn't be, it, although with a stroker crank, sometimes you gotta watch this, an aftermarket crank, you gotta make sure you have adequate clearance on the block. Now, 
they did make a factory FE motor with this stroke crank, so there's lots of clearance on the bottom of these blocks. You really usually don't have any issues, but you need to check that and look at all your points here and make sure this one looks really good. We got lots of room pretty much everywhere as this crank rotates, so we're not going to have any, any clearance problems with this crank. Now we're going to put our caps on it, and once you get the caps on, you only need two caps. We're going to put our bearing in our front cap and make sure it's facing the right direction. So just go ahead and put your cap on there, get the bolt started. Now we're also going to put the rear cap on it. And we, we put the, the lower bearing on the rear cap. We're not going to put the seal in or anything at this point. We're basically just, we just need to hold the crank into the engine with a couple of bearings. We need it located right, that's why we have our thrust bearing in. And also make sure that you seat these caps. Make sure you tap on them, make sure they're down flush. And then you can go ahead, you don't really even have to torque these at this point. What we can do is basically you can just snug them up because all we need to do is hold the crank in place so that we can locate our piston and rod assemblies. So snug the bolts up and then we'll grab the piston and rods and we'll start putting those in and, and checking that clearance. Okay guys, so, so this is our, this is part of the rotating assembly. This was a SCAT kit that we bought. And these are our, our SCAT rods. Um, they are six inch, 700 thousandths rods, so it's a long, it's a long rod motor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our piston and rod assembly. Now these are full floaters. 390s are actually full floaters from the factory. What that means is there's a bronze bushing in the eye of the rod and you, you just, the pin floats in the piston, uh, in, the, in the rod bore rather, and it also floats in the piston. And you have to have C-clips to hold it together. You can see that pin floats in there. We're just going to put these together without the clips right now because what we want to do is we just want to pre-assemble the engine and measure our deck heights to, to determine whether or not we're going to deck this thing. Oh, and one other thing. If you look at this rod box, this came from the ballast shop. What they do is, is they write the weight, the big end weight of uh, the rods and the bearings and the small end weight because they balance these things and they, they, they weigh the small end and they weigh the big end separately because we have two kinds of movement here. Up here we have reciprocating and down here we have rotating. And you can see they actually shave some material off of some of these rods. This, this has been sanded here because they balance this thing. Um, doesn't look like they really took much off of the big end of these. They're usually pretty close out of the box but we want to get these down to within a half a gram. Um, especially for a motor like this and so you want to hang on to these weights because down the road if you ever need to replace a connecting rod or you need to replace a piston or something you have that information you have the card that comes with your your information and they, they actually wrote the balance weights on the piston box for the pistons so we know how much the pistons weigh so if you ever have to replace anything on this motor down the road or you want to rebuild it and use the same crank or whatever you have all those weights. You have what you call your bob weight and the machine shop it's a lot easier for them to actually balance out the parts and, and get this thing right. So we're going to take um, four of these and just pre-assemble them with the pins in them like so and you also want to make sure you get the correct orientation here. The, the valve reliefs on the piston always go to the lifter valley and on the Ford you got to make sure that the the chamfered side goes toward the, the, the crankshaft. So we're going to put this guy on and we'll do the other three as well and then we'll get them in the motor and I'll show you what we're talking about. But you can see if, if you just slide that pin in there like so, I mean you can just you can just put these things together like right here on your kitchen table if you want or the shop table or whatever and I've got that pin and it's a full floater and it just slides right in so now I'm ready to put the piston and rod assemblies in and take some measurements okay guys here's the dealio so <clears throat> I use the same piston and rod assembly 
I put the piston and rod assembly together and I put the, the piston in all four corners and I put my dial indicator on it. Now we have a 200cc dish <clears throat> in these pistons so I subtracted 200 uh, or I added 200 to my reading rather. So what we've got here is with the piston at TDC in this corner we've got an 8 thousandths uh, deck clearance. The clearance minus the 200 for the dish is 8 thousandths. If we go to this end of the block, we got 9 thousandths. That's only a 1 thousandths difference from end to end. That's really good. Um, I put the pistons in the other four corners too. We had 8 thousandths here, which is the same as this deck. And then on this one, we had 7 thousandths, which is a 2 thousandths difference from here. But when we're talking about a deck that uh, a deck uh, stroke or a deck height that's this tall over nine inches one to two thousandths variation is not a big deal I've done engines from the factory that were forty thousandths off from end to end and that was a factory um, usually from the factory they are off more than this I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that somebody in the past has square deck this block because Number one, it has way less clearance than a factory block. Factory blocks usually have 35, 40 thousandths clearance. We're up around nine, eight or nine thousandths, which tells me that this has been decked, which is good. Um, there's nothing wrong with that kind of clearance. So our decks are flat and our deck height is the same from side to side and end to end. This is a really good deck on this block. So I don't think there's any reason to deck this. Uh, I, I don't want to take off any more material than we need to, plus it's very square. Um, this is the kind of block that you hope for. <laughs> uh, this is a real sweet deal on this one, so he got a great deal on this block. So, now that we know that our decks are true and square to the center line of the crank, uh, we can move on to the next step. At this point, what we want to do is we want to wash the block. now. We have a brush kit made by Moroso that actually gets into the oil galleries and the cylinder bore and so forth. And I use Dawn dishwashing detergent with uh, lemon in it because it's citric acid is good at cutting through the block. I've had, a, I've had some guys criticize me for doing this. One guy got on and he was cussing me up and down and saying, I can't believe you put water on the block. You're the biggest dumbass ever in the history of the world. Well. And, you know, I'd never take my engine to you. Well, the reality is, is that like 99% of the machine shops out there and a lot of the race teams are actually going to wash their block with soap and water. Soap or detergent will actually lift the grit out of the crosshatch. What happens um, a lot of times with brake clean or other types of cleaners is it embeds the grit into the crosshatch soap and detergent gets in and lifts all the grit and dirt off the block. We want to make sure this block is super super clean before we do any kind of of assembly so uh, we're gonna go through the the cleaning process and hopefully you know you won't get too bored watching this. Kinds of oil passages here. We want to scrub them all really good. I discovered the leaf blower by accident. One day I went to dry off a block 
and the compressor wasn't on and I was like, oh man, how am I going to dry this block? So I grabbed the leaf blower and what I discovered is the leaf blower actually dries the block like twice as fast as the air hose. Hence, I've been using the leaf blower ever since. Water displacing formula number 40. Put it on right away after you dry it, you don't want it to rust. We got our block final washed and basically ready to assemble. I was gonna walk you through putting the cam bearings in, but guess what? Got the wrong cam bearings. So I think that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Um, trust me, there's more coming. They're, they're gonna be like one right after the other on this deal, because um, I'm planning on finishing this engine in the next couple of days. And so stay tuned because there's gonna be more Big block stroker awesomeness coming. Um, once I get the cam bearings tomorrow, we'll continue on this thing and hopefully start to get the short block assembled tomorrow. I appreciate you watching and uh, stay tuned. There's more coming. Be sure to support this channel at www.patreon.com, uh, my vintage iron. And I thank you for all of you that are supporting me. I appreciate it. There's a lot more coming on this. There's actually a bunch more builds coming. So stay tuned, and if you have any questions or comments on this, uh, I tried to be as thorough as I could. Some of this might be a little bit mundane on this video, but I really honestly want to get into a lot of detail on this build for those of you that are planning on doing an FE, because I mean, I, I looked all over YouTube and there's just nothing, man. There's just, there's, there's nothing that's detailed to the point where somebody could actually do this. So I, hopefully this is gonna help you guys out. This is just the beginning, we're just getting started. I appreciate you watching and I will talk to you very soon, I promise.